Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking a little bit more about the ultra-massive black hole known as M87, whose picture we got to take only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. And also what we're going to do is, well, we're going to actually once again wonder what would happen if you were to take this black hole and place it somewhere else in the universe. Now. First of all, let's actually go back a little bit and take a look at this relatively short video made by NASA, made by Hubble, a few years ago. This will show you where the galaxy is located. So as we zoom in here, you'll see that this is M87. This is where the galaxy is located. And as we keep zooming in, eventually we will start seeing the um, very, very, very powerful, very long astrophysical jet that's coming from the black hole and this was made by NASA a few years ago and you can see the black hole itself is shooting out this jet because it's super powerful and super massive. But in terms of the actual size here, it's only maybe about twice as big as the Milky Way. So the galaxy itself is not that big but the super massive black hole in the middle of it is tremendously large and very very powerful. So we're going to ignore the galaxy itself. And by the way, if you've never heard about this galaxy or, or you know nothing about it, um, it's pretty far from us. It's about 57-ish million light years away, which is uh, roughly about, I guess, 30 times as far away as Andromeda Galaxy. And it's also, um, it's more massive. It's uh, about 200 times more massive than the Milky Way, but it's not larger in terms of size. It just, it's more dense. While at the same time, if you were to try to see where it's moving and how fast it's moving across the skies, its relative velocity in the night skies is about 1200 kilometers per second. So it's not really moving that fast, it's not going to get to us anytime soon. But in this video, we're going to imagine that, well, it did. Or at least its black hole did. So let's take this ultra-massive black hole, Powahi, and place it somewhere relatively close to our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and then just see what happens. I'm just kind of curious because it's a simulation that I've always wanted to create, but also it's a simulation that I kind of want to explore. So here we're going to use Universe Sandbox and I've already generated a Milky Way-like galaxy with these red dots that represent dark matter. Because for this simulation, I want to have dark matter and I want to feel the effects of dark matter or at least see what happens to dark matter if a tremendously massive black hole is placed next to our own galaxy. So in terms of the actual shape, um, it's not perfect, but it does resemble the Milky Way sort of from this angle, I guess. Uh, there is that spiral. And uh, in terms of mass, it's relatively accurate. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place Poehi somewhere nearby, and um, we're going to make its mass um, just as accurate as it is in real life. It's going to be about six and a half billion masses of the sun which is roughly around 1500 times more than the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. And then we're going to see what happens to the Milky Way, but we're, we're gonna have to accelerate time a little bit. And so here it is, this beautiful, but very, very dark and very mysteriously dangerous looking object that's reflecting dark matter right now. Uh, now, the reason dark matter is red is that it's easier to see that way, but also because we don't really exactly know what it's made out of, or even if it exists, but we still need to have it just for the realism of the simulation, because if I were to remove dark matter, which I'll do in the next simulation, um, the galaxy itself will fall apart really quickly, so it's sort of holding the galaxy together. Now, um, we're going to unpause the game, and we're also going to accelerate a little bit, just because we need to actually advance time here. And what I'm really looking for here is how will the shape of the galaxy transform, and what will happen to the uh, black hole? Is it going to fall into the, our own Milky Way? Is it going to absorb the Milky Way, or maybe something else? You know, you can kind of take a guess right now. Uh, I'm sure... Some of you already have expectations of what will happen, but as we accelerate time and as we start seeing the motion in the skies, things will start changing a little bit. Now here, I think it's still not going fast enough. I need to be moving this roughly almost a million years per second. Oh, and look at that. Something just came close to us. It's one of the dark matter pieces and oh, oh okay. So the speed right now is 660,000 years per second. Let's make it a little bit faster. Actually, no. Let's make it a little bit slower, maybe 420,000 years per second. And as you can see, the dark matter started to get attracted to Poehi and literally shooting through it. And there come our first stars from uh, one of the arms of the Milky Way. 
I think I'm actually running this a little bit too fast. So it looks like Puehi started to um, attract pretty much all of the stars from the Milky Way and literally sucking them into itself. It's shredding our Milky Way really fast. Now this is really interesting because it's creating this really long shape and it's almost like a vacuum cleaner destroying the galaxy's shape and sucking everything in. And looks like, okay, it also got kicked out from this region by the um, supermassive black hole from our own galaxy because I think it absorbed it and now it's shot out of the system. Now, I actually ran the simulation several times and sometimes this doesn't happen. And I'll show you in a second what uh, other scenarios that can happen here. But it has now left the um, galactic system. And we've actually seen galaxies that are missing their supermassive black hole from the middle and it's probably how it happened. Now watch what happens to the rest of the galaxy. Because there's nothing holding it now, it slowly is going to dissipate and turn into a very diffuse, non-existent um, galaxy. Now these diffuse galaxies are, or also known as ultra diffuse galaxies, are out there. We've seen quite a lot of them and we can't really explain them. We don't really know how they were formed, but maybe this is one of those ways. Maybe we've just witnessed how um, they are formed in real life. Uh, a lot of scientists believe that maybe this is actually something that does happen when galaxies actually lose their supermassive black holes, the rest of the matter kind of disappears. But this is one of the scenarios. Let's try another one. And this time, um, maybe just maybe something else will happen. So we're going to accelerate time once again. And just like that, the dark matter starts falling in. The whole galaxy gets sucked in again. And this time it gets kicked out into a different direction, opposite direction, because the push from our own supermassive black hole ended up kicking this out of the um, rest of the system. So we've created a miniature galaxy with a very high density and um, a lot of stars orbiting in this really small region. And this is what we would call an ultra density galaxy with a very, very, very massive uh, supermassive black hole in the middle which is actually kind of what the galaxy M87 is to begin with. This galaxy is not very large, but we know that it absorbed another supermassive galaxy um, not so long ago, within about a billion years, and it's currently eating up a lot of the matter from that uh, absorption. And it's quite possible that maybe this is how it was also formed, by essentially um, collecting a lot of stars, uh, creating a very, very massive black hole in the middle, and then turning into something like this. So there's a lot of various scenarios that uh, can happen in this situation, but in every single situation, Milky Way gets completely annihilated and destroyed. I don't even know where the rest of the Milky Way is anymore, but it looks like we have nothing left here, and most of the dark matter also left this region. And for the last simulation, let's do this again, but this time without any dark matter, just to see how all of this changes as well. So there is Powahi, there is Sagittarius A star, this is the relatively maybe not so realistic representation of the Milky Way. There's no dark matter here and um, usually this galaxy doesn't last very long. But here, as soon as we unpause this and start accelerating time yet again, look at that. Once again, everything just gets sucked into Poehi. The uh, Sagittarius A star also got swallowed and nothing is left of the Milky Way. This, I believe, was actually the remainder of the sun that was also in the simulation. So the solar system here um, also kind of disappeared and became its own star, its own rogue star that has no galaxy to be attached to now. And look at that. This is how our galaxy would be destroyed if, hypothetically, uh, Powehi, the M87 ultramassive black hole, was anywhere near our Milky Way. And so on this note, hopefully now you know a little bit more about how ultramassive black holes um, behave and, or what they would do to a galaxy if they were placed next to one. But um, obviously this is not going to happen anytime soon and even in the next 10 or so billion years, our galactic system is relatively safe. Um, only the Andromeda galaxy is going to come close to us, but its black hole is only a little bit more massive than the black hole in the middle of our own system. So it's very likely that the two galaxies will eventually merge and become one, but they're not going to destroy one another, and instead will create something that will be a lot more massive, a lot bigger in size, and will look pretty cool in the night skies. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Maybe even support the channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.